Hello, folks. Johnny B here, your digital tutor in the world of Web3, Internet of Things, and robotics. Today, we will touch upon the world of autonomous agents and discuss how they can interact with each other using Web3 tools. This will be illustrated by the recent Robonomics quest called Hacked Johnny's Lab. Beside that, we'll analyze how this game was developed. Sounds interesting. Then stay tuned. About agents. To begin with, let's solidify what exactly an autonomous agent is. As always, there are many definitions, so we'll just choose one and stick to it. Thus, an autonomous agent is a system that receives sensory data from its environment and decides how to respond to external stimuli in order to achieve its goals. Note that, according to this definition, in addition to various devices, living organisms, including humans, also fall under this category. Now, if several autonomous agents come together, they can form a multi-agent system. This is a system that consists of multiple agents, which interact in a shared environment to achieve common or conflicting goals. As we will see later, this definition perfectly describes the entire setup of our quest. About Hack Johnny's Lab Quest. So, let's talk about the game itself. To achieve the main goal, players are tasked to restore the C phrase from the data of the mobile robot. The robot moves randomly around the laboratory, recording a video. From time to time, the robot saves one of the 12 seed phrase words. During one of the robot's stops, players can see on the video a sign with a number, which hints at the order of that word in the seed phrase. The task is to match the numbers on the signs of the set of words received at the robot's stops to restore the correct seed phrase. The player who first restores the seed phrase and withdraws all XRT tokens from its address, wins. This game draws a lot of inspiration from the ideas about escaping from Black Mirror, and vibes were taken from the Mr. Robot TV series, and the Welcome to H&K anime. The quest was launched on June 7, after the Robonomics School 2024, and lasted for nine days. During the game, there were many funny moments. One of the Robonomics engineers figured out how to brute force the seed phrase, without having to go through 480 million options, which actually hacked Johnny's lab. Autonomous agents and their challenges. But we are primarily interested in the quest as an example of a multi-agent system. What agents can we identify? And what are their tasks? First of all, there is the robot itself. It needs to wait for the appearance of a task containing a seed phrase for randomizing, then proceed to execute task, and, finally, collect and send the results. At the same time, the robot itself is also a whole collection of various internal agents, each of which is tailored to its own tasks. We will talk more about them later. Secondly, the autonomous agent is a Discord bot whose task is to coordinate actions. On one hand, it monitors the registration of quest participants and waits for the winner, and on the other hand, it sends the robot on a mission. The third agent can be called a decentralized application, or DAP, responsible for user access to the robot's mission results. The DAP gets data, a seed phrase in random order in video, as well as decrypts, and displays it for users. Well, finally, the fourth agent, or rather the agents, are the users themselves. In addition to recovering the seed phrase, it was necessary to figure out how to create and add accounts with different types of cryptographic key pairs, and most importantly, one player had to manage to do all this before other did. Meet TurtleBot4. Let's get to know the robot itself a little better. This is TurtleBot4 Pro, a mobile platform from ClearPath Robotics, equipped with all the basic components that make a robot. You know, a robot. In principle, the TurtleBot series was initially conceived as a testbed for educational institutions, allowing for a study of robotics in general and the robot operating system in particular. However, this platform is also good for prototyping various robotics applications. The platform consists of two main components and additional peripherals. At the core is the educational robot, Create3, from iRobot, the manufacturer of robot vacuum cleaners. That's why it looks so similar. ClearPath Robotics added a Raspberry Pi 4 to Create3 as a computing unit, coordinating all the robot's components. Machine vision is achieved using the OAKD 3D camera from Luxonis, and an omnidirectional litter, from Slamtech. The platform and all components fully support ROSE 2, 
which allows testing a wide range of robotic packages. Robot Operating System 2 By the way, if you do not know or have forgotten what ROSE is, it is a good time to remind you. ROSE is a set of software libraries, tools, and a full-fledged runtime environment for developing robotic applications. From the very beginning, this framework was designed to make the lives of roboticists easier. The variety of robots and their equipment is too extensive to start development from scratch each time. Not to mention, the range of tasks encountered in this field is also vast. One developer might know how to plan the movements of a robot, but not understand computer vision at all, as each of these tasks essentially requires separate education. Rose solves these problems by offering a convenient way to abstract communications between heterogeneous components, as well as reusing already developed packages and projects. It is important to note that one of the great advantages of Rose is its active community of researchers and developers who openly share their developments with each other. After about 10 years of the first iteration of the robot operating system, the developers released Rose 2, which better handles real-time tasks, supports multi-agent robot systems, and has increased performance. It is necessary to note the concepts of Rose that we will use later. All processes of the robot and its devices are described as nodes that can exchange data in messages through topics. Additionally, nodes can call services as call and response model and actions as goal feedback result model from each other. Robot localization and navigation based on ROSE 2. The most important task that needs to be solved for a mobile robot is its localization, understanding where it is, and navigation, how and where it can go. For TurtleBot 4, this task is solved using two rows, two packages. The first package called Slam Toolbox addresses the task of simultaneous localization and mapping. With its help, the robot uses data from the litter and other sensors to build a two-dimensional map. This map is later used for navigating the laboratory. The second package, NAB2 implements route planning and actual movement along it. A waypoint is set for the robot on the map, where it needs to go, and using NAV2, the robot constructs a route, bypassing all encountered obstacles along the way. Main note, Johnny Lab Navigator. So, having all the ready resources and functions of the robot, we need to use them to solve the task, navigating the laboratory, and saving the results. For this, a separate ROSE node was written, Johnny Lab Navigator. First, the node is responsible for communicating with other nodes of the robot. It sends requests for docking and undocking from the charging station, sends waypoints to the NAV2 nodes, and velocity commands for direct control of the robot's wheels. At the end of its work, the node publishes the name of the final archive with all the data in the ROSE topic. Secondly, the node performs the main non-ROSE functions. It receives waypoints and a seed phrase, shuffles them, starts video recording from the camera, and saves all the results. The only thing the node doesn't know is when to start the robot's work, as this information comes from another agent, the Discord bot. And here we come to the most interesting part, the bridge between ROSE 2 and the world of Web3. Robonomics ROSE 2 Wrapper Robonomics Parachain has very useful functions for devices and robots, namely the function of placing information in the blockchain, data log, and the function of sending a launch command with parameters, launch. This is practical in cases where a robot needs to store important data in a decentralized cloud or receive a command to execute from another verified agent. To enable ROSE nodes to interact with the parachain, a wrapper package for ROSE 2 was written based on the Python module called Robonomics Interface. Robonomics ROSE 2 wrapper includes two nodes, PubSub and Robot Handler. The first node is standardized and wraps all the basic functions for data log and launch into understandable ROSE services and topics. Additionally, the node is built in access to the IPFS file system, allowing to upload and download files by their hash. PubSub is unique to each ROSE 2 process that needs access to the parachain because it accepts credentials of the account in Robonomics as configuration parameters. You can configure many parameters for PubSub, including credentials for Robonomics EOT subscription and IPFS pinning services. Robot Handler, in turn, applies this functionality during task execution for each specific robot. This node coordinates the actions of PubSub and other robot nodes, handling launches, deciding when to send data log, 
and how the robot should behave, based on the received and set data. A base class has been written for the robot handler with Rose clients providing access to PubSub, so developers only need to add functions specific to their robots. Lifecycling of Johnny Lab Navigator Specifically, in the example with Hack Johnny's Lab, the robot handler node is responsible for switching the state of the Johnny Lab Navigator node. One of the innovations in Rose 2 is the ability to create so-called lifecycle, or managed nodes. Such nodes can be in one of four states, unconfigured, inactive, active, finalized, and switching between them using different transitions. This is very convenient when a node operates on a continuous basis and needs to transition from a waiting state to an active working state. Thus, the Johnny Lab Navigator node transitions to an unconfigured state after initialization and waits for a signal from the robot handler about the receiving of a launch with the seed phrase. As soon as this happens, the node undergoes configuration, during which the route through the lab is prepared. That the node transitions to an active state and the robot performs the main work passing through the lab recording video. After this, the node deactivates and the robot returns to the docking station. In the final stage, the node transitions back to an unconfigured state, but before this, all data is saved, the archive name is published to the topic, and all variables are cleared. With the receiving of the next launch, everything repeats until the node is called to shut down. Complete Scheme of Multi-Agent System now we can finally move to the complete scheme of interacting agents during the quest, Hack Johnny's Lab. Agents exist in two intersecting environments, Rose 2 and Web 3. Purely in the first environment, there is the mobile platform Create 3, Raspberry Pi 4, additional peripherals, all necessary TurtleBot 4 stack, and the main node for the quest, Johnny Lab Navigator. At the intersection of Rose 2 and Web 3, there is a PubSub node that broadcasts messages from and to the parachain, and a robot handler that processes these messages. At the Web3 level, there's a Discord bot coordinating the game, a DAP providing users access to the results, and the users themselves. Thus, everything works perfectly, and the game goes smoothly. Game Statistics Let's summarize. During the time of the event, 28 unique players participated in the game, with a peak online presence of 14 people. A total of 777 XRT were rewarded, and players reviewed data logs with a total size of over 2 gigabytes. There were 18 robot runs in the lab, of which only two required engineer intervention. Quite a good statistic. The future, Rose 2 Lib P2P middleware. Reflected in the future of multi agent systems built at the intersection of Rose 2 and Web 3, and how they can be improved, we should mention the idea that is actively discussed and developed by Robonomics. The thing is that communications in the robot operating system too are ensured by a special communication layer, the so-called middleware. It in turn is based on ready-made communication solutions, in particular, various implementations of the Data Distribution Service, or DDS standard. They have some shortcomings, and developers are looking for better solutions, but they do the basic job. But middleware can be based on any suitable communication protocol and Robonomics has long been looking at LibP2P as a candidate. LibP2P is an open source transport protocol for creating encrypted peer to peer networks. By integrating LibP2P as middleware, roboticists can leverage its robust capabilities with native and remote peer to peer communication between nodes. This is especially important if we think about a future in which robots of different types will form swarms and will need to communicate in some secure and trusted way. And with the addition of the Robonomics functionality, which is perfectly compatible with LibP2P communications, a decentralized cloud will be available for machines to store and exchange critical data. That's all, folks. I hope you enjoyed this little dive into multi-agent systems and Web3. Subscribe to Robonomics so as not to miss interesting stuff. See you soon.